weeks and when the weather got nice I'm sort of cutting wood that I really needed to be assembling into a planter immediately and I've got weekends that I can do that in because it's still dark so I don't really want to be working outside in the dark with power tools because that can get interesting but if I can get them all cut and at least part assembled uh, before planting season when when the weather turns nice we can just take the bits upstairs and uh, finish the assembly throw the dirt in throw the plastic in not necessarily in that order and uh, put the seeds in the ground She wants to grow potatoes, but I, th I think potatoes will probably work um, downstairs. Probably not in the planters. But because the, the planters are kind of decorative planters, they're not really um, for mass production of fruit and veg. But I do have one side, once our yard runs, the house faces, faces east-west. So the sun is on the south side of the yard and we have a row of uh, evergreen trees on the north side. But the grass is growing under the trees to a certain extent. So one thought I have is I could tear up the soil close to the trees uh, where, where there is currently grass. And we could plant things like potatoes or carrots there. Uh, we might lose some to rabbits or squirrels. Um, I'm not sure deer are into digging up root vegetables to eat. Maybe they are, but um, the thought is is to run a strip along there that, that I can just um, till the soil, get rid of the grass, and then just plant potatoes there. Um, or I could build, you know, I could get a bit, assemble some really big planters. Um, and plant potatoes in. I've seen a couple of guys, um, I think there was one guy in Australia, New Zealand, I forget because I, I, I've seen a, a farmer in Australia, I've seen a farmer in New Zealand on YouTube. Um, I've watched a couple of farmers in Northern Ohio, Michigan, uh, because they tend to recommend crops that are good for this area and when to plant them but um, the Antipodean farm or you know home farmer was planting stuff just because and he had an interesting way of doing it and so I watched it because it was an interesting way of doing it and it might work it might not work for me <coughs> but uh, Potentially, I might plant some root crops. Not on the deck. But probably not this year. Probably next year or the year after when I can run a tiller down the tree line. The problem with the tree line is, is the trees are a little bit unruly and you can take a branch to the face when you're cutting the grass so if I don't have to cut the grass there because I've tilled it all in then that would be a little bit more comfortable I can cut the grass that's free yeah, out in in the yard without any obstructions okay where are we going here I think I need to go through the uh, animal dealer. But I was right, it's 7.40 game time, so we're not going to, we've only got 
20 minutes, which in real world time equates to about 8 minutes before it's going to start raining. So the best thing I can do now is take this over here. We'll park it up and we'll wait for the weather to clear. Probably stick it in the field because we can. I might do one end just so that I've got the turnaround at that end. Then I'll park off the field for the weather event. So yeah, that's our escapade with There we go. And again, that's that's issues with my buttons. I am I'm seriously needing a new side panel of some description or another. But also, while I'm buying buying lumber, I can get uh, the final fourteen pieces of wood that I need to build my modern railroad tables. Then when that's done, uh, I'm going to need some plywood and cut that into pieces so that I can start assembling the track bed. It's kind of getting to the point now where I really need to have at least a loop of track. It's going to be a double loop. So that when I buy things, I can test them out immediately. Um, and that goes off with my uh, my back issues I I really need to build you know have something I can run stuff at home <coughs> rather than taking it down to a, the model railway club and running it there because the model railway club is on the top floor and um, I'm having issues with stairs at the moment good morning cameo Welcome to Saturday. It is a wonderful wet morning, both here and almost on the farm. <laughs> oh, I can collect money. I can collect money. That would be a good thing. This is a rather large uh, expanse of dirt here with grass on it. Kind of handy, I guess. Don't really need to do a headland at this end. I will. And we'll stop just short of the hedge. And I will fold that up. And 7.51, I think we are going to look at waiting out the rain at this point. So, turn the engine off, turn the engine off. That button there, we'll j jump out, we'll look at how the muddy state of our tractor. I do like this tractor. That said, um, I think Smetty has a nice... 800. I'm not sure I've uh, bothered downloading it because the 800 is in game. Although I think his model is a couple of years early. Um, so it's sort of a 19 or 2005 2010 model, whereas this is a 2023. Don't know why I'm looking down here. But, uh, Interesting. Oh, we've got a Lamborghini R6 for those that want to pretend to be Jeremy Clarkson. Anyway, um, yeah, let's rain it. Speed up the time and wait out the rain. Yeah, I, 
Looking outside, I'm not sure it's actually in the process of raining. The, the snow people are dead and uh, piles of little white uh, frozen stuff. We watched them disintegrate in the rain yesterday. First their heads fell off, then they got thin. Now one of them looks like a giant bunny. And the other one is in a very sad state. And then, uh, yeah, so that's, I guess that's plans for this year. I'm still trying to figure out how to how to cut wood into a smooth circle. Um, I've seen some ideas of um, printing printing full size arcs on paper on your laser printer, cutting them out, um, sort of tacking them, you know, tape or whatever onto a piece of wood, scribing the line and then uh, using a jigsaw to cut the arc um, and I'm, I probably end up doing something like that. Um, other options involve sort of building a jig that's like a, a swing, a, a wood swing arm of about four foot long and then drilling holes at strategic points so you can poke a pencil through it and then uh, draw an arc on a piece of wood that you can follow it. The, pro the, the part of the problem is, is let's say I, I'm, I'm doing a radius of four feet. So if I had a four, four foot by four foot board, I'm basically taking an arc from one corner to another, not, not a straight line. But the problem is, is as you approach that, the track goes from dead straight to full curve in no time flat. And what ideally what you want to do is to enter the curve. Um, so your curve starts a little bit early and isn't quite as tight as, it, as you need it to be initially. It does mean when you get to the middle of the curve, it's going to be a lot tighter. So you make it in four foot. But I'm not doing a four foot curve. I'm doing 180 degrees, so I'm doing eight foot. So um, I can't sort of... Oh, it stopped. I can't do a smooth entry and a smooth exit in a 90 degree arc, I've got to do a smooth entry as tight and when you hit the, you know, the, the 90 degree point, it needs to be at its tightest and then easing off on the other side. Now I only have to make one template because you can just flip it over. So once I've cut one, one arc, I can then cut a, you know, use that as a guide for a second one and then actually end up cutting four and doing two the way I cut it and flipping the other two over. And then I have to make sure I get the tighter edges where they need to be. Okay, what does this say? This says it is gently raining. Oh, that sucks. I don't see any rain. Uh, windshield wipers don't seem to be moving on the tractor. But the ground is going to be wet so we will stand in the field I will be a man out standing in my field the ground is perfectly dry the ground is quite soggy well that sucks <laughs> make up your mind are you perfectly dry or quite soggy I mean I think we have to go past midday 17 degrees it's sunny there'll be cloud later but I need the ground to dry out quite substantially because we do know if I put the cultivator in the ground right now, it's going to be, uh, if it, even if it's at 100%, it's going to be at 
before I reach the other end of the field. Round is slightly damp. I think I'll still go till two. Ish. And okay. Let's jump in the tractor and I'll I'll do a sample test with the uh, engine works. So, step one, are we leaving tracks in the mud? Yes, we are. And I'm pretty sure if I do this and drop it on the ground, it's going to tell me off. Yes, wet ground is likely damaging your cultivator. It's not a good time to go out into the field and do things, even at slightly damp. And we can see there, the ground is not playing well for us. Need coffee, long hauler. Good morning. Welcome to the Saturday stream. So what is the time? 10 o'clock. So we've been going about an hour and a half. And uh, everybody else in the house is still in bed, so... Yay. But yeah, once I've got at least one circle, I can uh, unpack it. You know, when I get a delivery of train stuff from the UK, I can get it out of the box and test it immediately um, rather than... Um, the problem we have sometimes is... We'll buy a thing and then we won't actually use it for six to nine months, by which time you can't really say, yes, it arrives and it didn't work because most people, you know, you've got a 30 day grace period. The ground is perfectly dry. Okay, that sounds like a good thing. Let's go get back in the tractor and see how this pans out. I think what I'll do is I will at least do this row right from the edge so that we can uh, cover up that uh, mess we made at the entrance to the field. So maybe heading set A, 90 degrees. I kind of cheat there um, when I'm setting up on the on the gray on the the line. I will either leave it at zero, it defaults to zero, or I'll put in 90, um, even though I'm facing 270. Um, I never type in 270 because I have to use the delete key and all sorts of other stuff. Ah. Uh, oh, well, that's fair. Cameo's still half asleep. You're just getting coffee so you can go back to sleep. Which I can understand. I am the man who drinks Mountain Dew at 10 o'clock at night. And still sleeps all night. I am a finely trained person. When my head pits the pillow, I will be sleeping within five minutes. And it really pisses my wife off. Because she'll toss and turn for hours. And me, I just get into bed. Yeah. When we go to bed at the same time, she's... She's trying to get to sleep and I'm gone. Keeping her awake from that point. At least when she comes to bed at two o'clock in the morning most of the time, it's I'm asleep and she's tired enough that it doesn't make a blind bit of difference to her getting to sleep. 
over the last few weeks, uh, last last week, week, two weeks, I'm really not doing well. Um, I am falling asleep at eight o'clock in the evening. I'm waking up at three o'clock in the morning due to the pain. And um, while it's happening less frequently, um, the problem is, is if I go to sleep at eight o'clock in the evening, I am naturally going to wake up at three o'clock in the morning. Not necessarily because I'm in pain, but because, you know, I'm, I'm not getting sleep because I'm in pain when I'm in pain. But when I get really tired at around eight o'clock, I just fall asleep. And then that throws my sleep cycle out. Normally, you know, I'll, I'll sleep from 10 till 6. But if I sleep from 8, I'm waking up at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'm not going to go back to sleep, no matter how hard I try. And that makes the rest of the day just horrible. I think we didn't get. I don't think I collected payment for the first field we did. So we're going to have two of them, which should put us up to about 95,000. And uh, let's not do that there. Okay, let's do that there. So I'm fairly certain you're not sure I'm supposed to reverse. Yeah, my, my, my thing is partially that, partially it's just I've been sleeping for long enough and my body just says you've had you know, six, eight hours, seven, eight hours sleep, it's time for you to wake up. So if I go to bed too early, I'm just going to wake up too early. This will be good, and it is July 4. So what is this piece of equipment we have on the back? See, it does take a seed. Can, dude, customize. If you put the CD unit on, oh, it doesn't have a um, a seed tank. Okay, and that costs four thousand. Crashing into trees probably costs a lot more than 4000 So, it cost me 4000 to put a seed thing on this. I'm not sure if I still have the seed tender. The seed canister. I should, I should probably check on that too. So, my equipment... Yes. I do have this thing. It does take 1,600 litres of stuff. I think I, we sold the cedar that I had. Um, but putting a cedar or seeds, cedar equipment on this might be where we want to take the farm in the, at least for the near term. does mean if 1600 litres of seed it'll go a long way for grass 
which is predominantly what we've been planting or seeding for most of the time on this farm but we are now going to be branching into arable farming and that is going to that's going to use up seed faster if we're planting barley or wheat or oats I can't remember oats are fairly um, light use of seed canola is good for seed but is horrible for um, fertilizer and since we still don't have animals we don't have any way to save on fertilizer but then yeah so is that corn maize is horrible for nitrogen as well nitrogen requirements still this is working out quite nicely we are halfway yay and pretty much started now. We'll be done before five, I guess. And then we can move into August and see where we go from there. I may take this back via the store and get the cedar attachment installed. might see about buying a lime spreader as well. That should put our farm right where it, we need it to be. And if it's easy enough, we can pull the cedar attachment off whenever we need to go do some cultivating contracts. trying to get into 